Set six will be played on Newkirk. Spawning in the bottom left hand position, the blue Zerg for Evil Geniuses, Team Liquid. His name is Zinio. His opponent spawns in the bottom right position as Red Terran. His name is Fantasy, playing for SK Telecom T1. Currently has one kill after taking out Jadong on Naro Station SE. So Evil Genius' team look, but they were pretty far ahead. And the gap is starting to close here. They're going to go into that ace map situation if Xenio falls here against Fantasy. And I'm looking at the ace map. It's going to be Korhal Floating Island. And it would be a PVT because JYP is the only player left yes. for them. Which is kind of unfortunate because if they sent out Hero on that particular map, then it would have been much better because he knows how to snipe these players left and right. Yeah. I feel like if Hero uh, was here today, then uh, this would this would probably be even easier mm. for uh, Evil Genius' team with the win. But it's well, going to be a lot harder now that they have to deal with Fantasy. Well, also think about this. If, he, if the full roster was here in Korea today, there was no guarantee that Oz was going to gonna get sent out first. Oh, that's true. And he proved himself here today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, by the way, the the quiz of the day. Um, Should I say it? Yeah, you say it. I forgot it, but it's, an, it's in my mind. It's on the tip of my tongue. June 6, 2007. Go Rush decided to set up his gears for 50 minutes. This was b back when Pro League didn't have any uh, setups in the uh, rulings on the setup time. Yeah. So after this incident, they had to limit it to five minutes because Go Rush took like a nice hour <laughs> inside the booth trying to set up his keyboard and mouse. Now the qu the real question of the day is who did he face in that particular ace match? So that's the question. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying Pro League. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. My Twitter ID is at yeah, Whiplash. You can find me at Supernova Maniac. Now looking at the, the game here, it looks like Fantasy decided to go for another command center first. Xenia will scout that pretty quickly here. There's Coach Boxer looking sharp as ever. Mm -hmm. Of course, Fantasy was called Boxer and I love Ooh's Prodigy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the most successful Terrans from Hi, the Elk. SKT line. <laughs> Also, a coach for SK Telecom T1 now. He is on uh, listed under uh, playing coach for now, but I do believe he's only coaching for now, you know, while playing some games here and there. Yeah. Just yeah. like Odin from Samsung Con. Yeah. There's a lot of player coaches and uh, Calm from STX Soul. Now, Fantasy is just opening up the same again compared to the last game. He's getting a command center first and then the barracks. Yeah, we should see the development of the game be pretty similar mm -hmm. to uh, last game. We may see Fantasy opt for more aggressive play and not get that fast third CC. Xenia has been very greedy here, not making any units whatsoever, just yeah. droning up, focusing on that economy. And I do believe, yeah, like you said, Fantasy he could pl play a little bit more aggressive this game because if you compare the opponents, Xenia hasn't been, hasn't been playing well in this particular matchup in Pro League. Mm -hmm. Fantasy it leads 2-0 against Xenia when it comes to StarCraft 2. And Jadong just has better map awareness. I mean, if you saw his previous games, especially against Harding, his reaction timing was fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of his Brood War skill really transferring over. Mm -hmm. Being able to react to things as fast as possible, that's something that uh, you have to do a lot in Brood War. And uh, certainly that skill has, um, you know, passed over for Jadong into StarCraft 2. So I'm just curious how Xenia is going to play this game out. Is he going to play a macro game? Is he going to try to go for a bust behind this? Or... Only time will tell what he is going to go for, but so far it's looking very standard by Xenia. Oh, look at this. Fantasy going for a third command center, doing the wall off there at the uh, natural ramp. We saw, I think, I believe his innovation was the first person to really do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, all these Terran players, they don't care if the third commander gets, command center gets scouted because they just use it as a part of wall these days. Yeah, and most Terrans are pretty comfortable defending mm -hmm. against the, the pressure from Zerg. So that is something else to keep in mind. Zergling speed finishes here. Xenio immediately puts down a third hatchery as well. And he's getting additional gas here. No lair yet. And there we go. The lair just starts. And we don't see a roach run down by Xenio just yet. But I expect it to go down very soon. Now the Hellions moving out now. They're going to do a little bit of scouting. Scare away these uh, speedlings as well. Mm -hmm. And that, this actually forces out first initial Zerglings from Xenio. You know, there was four out against the SCVs, and he's making four more right now. Once the Hellion counts, um, Hellion start 
getting to like, you know, four Hellions or like six Hellions, he needs a lot more Zerglings than just eight. Yeah. So he needs to he needs to use the Queens in perfect position or just make uh, more units. Going for the double Evo Chamber. Xenio playing a very economic focused game, similar to Jadon. And Fantasy is, you know, playing pretty close to how he did the last game as well. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, almost like a mirror of the last game, just a different map. A map which I'm sure both players are a little bit more comfortable on. Fantasy gets a good scan off though this time, sees the double Evo Chambers and their timing. Roach Warren on the way now as well for Xenio. So I'm just curious, what is Xenio going to go for? Is he going to go for... The layer is finished, but is he going to go for the Spire, or is he going to try to stick to Roach and Hydra composition throughout the whole game? I don't know. It's, I think it's a little bit early to call. He is making a Spine and Spore as if uh, he's expecting the, the there play we go. drop play real quick. And ah, uh, yeah, the plus one range attack on the way. So it looks like Xenio will be doing that Roach Hydra composition. Mm -hmm. And um, I will, oh, really quickly, I want to point out, yeah, I think it was Fantasy ahead. that effort beat on this map yeah. with the, just the powerful Roach Hydra push. And whoa, Overlord drops being researched. This is going to catch Fantasy out of position. And Xenio, he studied that game really well. Because Fantasy, he wasn't scouting around inside the main base. He got some scans around. He saw the two Evo Chambers, but it didn't give any information on what tech Fan uh, Xenio is going for, and Xenio studied that game very well. Fantasy, he does a really greedy play, but he lacks the scouting information in this particular matchup, especially on this map. So going for the drops inside the main base, this can actually end the game. If Fantasy does not scout it in time. Uh, Fantasy, he's not going to make any tanks, I feel, uh, early on. He may eventually get a few Widow Mines out, but there's not going to be a lot out there for Fantasy, really. Um. All right, the Roach is spotted, so that's got to tip off Fantasy that something's going on. He does see the additional Roaches in the double Evo Chambers, so yeah. we may see some Marauder production continue here from him. And Xenio, he's on 53 drones right now, so his economy is still solid. Yeah, but if you remember, he's going for the drop, mm -hmm. which is something that Fantasy is not expecting at this point. And with the scan, he saw the Overlords clumped up over there, but that's just normal by Desert players. And he didn't see that the speed is out there. He didn't see the drop is out there. In fact, the upgrades are just going to finish at this point. There's Look more units coming out. Timing and of this. Nidus Canal on the way as well here. Very interesting. Drop and drop speed and Nidus at the same time. Oh, uh, it's going to be a pretty big commitment here. He wants to use the Nidus Swarm uh, to you know, have additional reinforcements. Fantasy, it uh, looks like he is uh, getting three bunkers now, but he doesn't realize that this attack, it's going to be in his main base, not at his front doorstep. Yeah, the main base, there's actually a huge area on the left side where the Nidus Worm can actually go down, if you think about it. Yeah. And what's also smart is that Xenio, if he attacks into oh. the third base, and if the attack doesn't really work out, he could elevate her right inside the main base. That's true, and it looks like these roaches are going to scare away Fantasy's army for now. This is going to allow Xenio to get in position here. He's going to uh, make He's going to drop into the main base now. No, that's right, he's going to move into the main base. This Marine is going to delay things for a little bit here. Eventually get picked off. All right, the Roach is still just trying to be annoying at the front base. Really, you know, kind of convincing Fantasy that, hey, look at me at the front. You know, don't do anything else. Don't be in your main base. That's a really nice fake out because here comes the Overlords without any units and the Hellion scout the number of Overlords. So, but remember, that could have been Will a it be? Fake. Will he have enough time? Yes, he's asked to go right now. Mm. He's going to be dropping the Nidus from as well, but Fantasy getting in position. It's, it's better for him to just pull out and go for the third base once again. He's just going to try to drop on top of the units. I'm not sure if this is the best decision from uh, Xenia. I mean, he's got a lot of roaches well, here. He's going to do a lot, a lot of, of damage, but... The Stim Marine count just may be too high here. Yeah, and there's also a Nidus Ward going down. I don't know where it is. It's inside the main base right now. It completes. More Roaches are going to join the party here. This may be enough to take out Fantasy, but the Nidus Worm gets picked out off immediately. Another Nidus Worm on the way. Fantasy being attacked from multiple angles here. Can he hold on? The supply is in the favor of Xenio, but he needs to do economic damage if he wants to sustain this attack and make it worth it. Dropping on the tank. Another Nidus Worm being created. Uh, SCV is going off the mineral line to attack the Snidus Swarm. It looks like these Overlords are going to get picked off here, but the SCV count, uh, he's starting to lose a lot right now. He's losing a lot, but remember, that's three command centers behind us, so he can stabilize easily behind us. And Xenia was trying to do a double pronged attack, but he just didn't have uh, too many Roaches at one position I throughout the whole attack. I think that the, the problem there for Xenio is that the Hellions scouted the Overlords yes. at the last minute. He needed to bring that those hurt so much. He needed to bring those kind of around the, the back edge of that position on the map, load his units up, and then sneakily move through. 
if he did that and dropped in the mineral line, I think things would have worked a lot better. Well, for him. you still have to give uh, Zinio some credit because he was trying his best to get the overlord out of position. Remember when he put the roach on top of the ramp and saw the marine? He delayed the push by a few seconds just to make sure that he, it doesn't get scouted. Yeah. All right, so Zinio is still committing to this roach attack here. But he's going to go for a surround from two locations. Uh, may either a double pronged attack or just go straight around. There's still a lot of units here. In the back fantasy in a bit of a panic mode right now. And this is still pretty much an all-in from Xenio here. If this attack fails, then uh, I think that's going to be it for him. He's just moving forward, going into the main base here. The and Spidey he put us not up. And the Roaches get through. Another Nidus Worm going down now as well. The tank on the high ground, he's going to have to eventually deal with that. And the Fantasy has got a lot of units here. But the Roaches, they're going to be able to do a good amount of damage, pick off a lot of these units. And uh, the Nidus Worm is about to finish here. That's going to allow reinforcements to come through. Another Nidus Worm on the way. Fantasy doing an amazing job picking off these Nidus yeah, Worms before I mean, too many units can come through, but the supplies right now... Now it's a little bit harder for Fantasy to sit, uh, for Xenia to make the attack work because the Metabucks are out. Yeah, the Metabucks are, the are out. The is done, the Metabucks are out, so even if he deals some economic damage, um, as long as Xenia commits, Fantasy is going to defend. The supplies right now in Fantasy's favor. He's got a good amount of units. His 2-2 two -two is going to complete soon. Everything is... Worked out for fantasy, I feel. Yeah, and Xenio is so trying to make this work with the Roaches, but the timing window is gone. Yeah, I feel like the timing window is gone. The only thing that Xenio can really do is delay it. Oh no, throwing away his Roaches. This is not what he wants to do, but she realizes nothing else he can do there. So fantasy taking game number six, bringing it to the seventh and final ace match. Xenio, I feel like he had a good plan, and with a little bit better execution, it could have worked. That one single Hellion was just... The group just, of Hellions there, they, they scouted everything yeah. and then Fantasy knew and he got in position. And Xenio like, already was pressing forward at the front, so that caused Fantasy yeah. to make some tanks earlier than he may have normally or would have in that situation. And Xenio could have made this work perfectly by only sending Lone Roach on top of the ramp instead of pulling every single thing away from the third command center because once the Roaches come, they hit a little, they see only two bunkers in the front and those number of Roaches pulling back. It means that your Zerg opponent has something else planned. It was only a fake, and it seems like Fantasy was aware of it as he was sending the Hellions around the area to see where the Roaches were. Uh, it was looking a little bit fishy, and Fantasy, he was able to not get caught in the bait lure, I guess. Uh, before we get our next player, you know what would have been better? To send the Overlords inside the main base without the drop and take out the third command center. Yeah, that could have been pretty cool to see as well. All right, JYP being sent out from Evil Genius's Team Liquid. Their last player here and the last shot at a victory and win for Evil Genius's Team Liquid. It would be a solid win. Their opponents, SK Telecom, aren't easy at all. They are in uh, third place, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, still a pretty good team. Fantasy, he's going to have to be ready for the cheese, man. That's all I got to say. So, JYP versus Fantasy in the A set. Don't go anywhere, guys. This is the SK Planet Pro League. 